Today's video is all about research. If you have never done a research project before or want to improve your research skills, this video is for you. I'm going to be talking you through how to do a research project from start to finish. So if you're interested in that, continue watching. Everybody. Welcome back. As you know, my name's Karen and I am a UX designer who transitioned about a year ago. I recorded my entire transition on YouTube, so if you're ever curious about how I got here, please check out the channel. For today, we are going to be talking about research because I was made the research lead for one of the projects at my company. I've always had a pretty strong research background, but this was the first time that I was managing a group of people and really, really taking the reins for a client project. So what I wanted to do today was share with you the process that we went through and tell you step by step how you can run your own research project from start to finish. We're gonna talk about how to make a research plan, how to best set up your usability prototypes. We're also going to discuss interview guide, the difference between moderated and unmoderated tests. I'm also gonna share with you a way that you can analyze your findings. I'm gonna share with you how to present your findings in a slide deck. And then I'm gonna answer a couple of common questions questions. So in some situations, the research project might start off on a weird foot because the client might not realize that they need research to be done on their designs or they might undervalue it. So sometimes it's up to us as designers to advocate for usability testing. One of the ways that you can convince a client to do research is through a research plan. So what you have first is an introduction section. You put the title of the project, the date of the last revision, so this section will change every single time you access the document, and the names of all of the people working on the project with you. And then what you wanna put is your problem statements, and then you'll put your objectives. So usually it's something like to deepen the understanding of blah, 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 to test the usability of blah, blah, blah. And then you'd have a section on your participants, like your target characteristics, how old they are, their gender, just things about them that you want to have. And then you'll have recruiting methods. So how are you getting these participants? And then the incentive, if there is any. Next, you'll have the methodology section. So this is just detailing you know, how you're running the session. Is it moderated? Is it unmoderated? Is it through Zoom? Is it, in, is it in person? You'd also put the number of participants and if they're doing multiple sessions, you wanna mention that and how long the session is meant to be. You'll also have a timeline section where you're gonna write dates for like goals, when you want certain things done by. Recruitment, when do you wanna have recruitment done by? When do you wanna start testing? When do you wanna start analyzing everything? Um, synthesizing is basically when you're gonna be putting everything together. And then um, the last part is when you're going to report and present your findings to the client. The next section is the resources section. So this can be anything you want it to be. Um, I have a section for preliminary research, I also have an email template section. So this includes the script for what I'm going to write in the email to participants, you know, when I'm welcoming them to the project. What am I going to write to them if they no show to a session? What am I gonna to write to them when I'm talking to them about the incentives after the session? So this is just so you don't have to rewrite things over and over and over again. You have it, you can just copy and paste and shoot off the email. So this can be really anything you want. Next, we're gonna talk about usability prototypes. Most of you probably already know how to make a prototype, but what I'm gonna talk about is how you should set it up for a usability test. Now, my number one tip is to put all of your usability prototypes on the same Figma page. The reason for this is that when you share the link to the user to run through all of your tests, they only have to click on one link to access all of the tests. Now to separate one test from the other, you just have to add what you know these blue boxes are is a new starting point. An example of how you can make a starting point is you click on prototype in the top right hand panel 
and then you, you know, you drag your noodle over, do the interaction, and you have a starting point, flow one, right? But let's say I wanna have a different starting point. I don't wanna have just flow one, so let me just duplicate some of these screens here. Okay, so I have these screens here and I want a new starting point. Like once they've done task one, I want them to go on to task two. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm gonna click flow starting point and then I'll have flow two. And you can relabel these as well up here. And that's how you create the starting points. And when you go to share the, the test, you'll see them show up on the side here, flow one, flow two. So I just tell them, okay, click on flow two now. And then they would have their new starting point and they can start their next test. If you're doing usability testing, you're also going to need an interview guide. So I've created a basic interview guide template for you here. And what you're gonna start with is the participant's name, the session that you're on, and then you're gonna dive into the introduction section. So this is where you introduce yourself, you introduce the other team members, you ask the user to turn their camera on if they haven't already, you're gonna welcome and thank them for participating in the study, and then you're just gonna quickly remind them why they're there. So what is the goal today? What are they gonna be looking at? And then after that, I have a section for the prototype link. A lot of my sessions tend to be over Zoom, so I like to have a copy of the link so I don't have to go hunting for it during the research session. I can just copy, paste, and send it off to them. Then there's the very important part where you get permission to record. You just wanna ask them, you know, is it okay that I record this session? It's only for note-taking purposes and just get that yes. After that, we go into the discovery questions. So this can be really whatever you need for your research. You could be asking their name, their job location. You could be asking them if they've used a platform like this before to tell you about their experience with it that kind of thing. You just really want to get some background feel for the situation and to understand if they have any type of relative experience. After that, we go into the pre-testing reminders before the actual usability testing. So these reminders include, you know, we're just testing the app, not you. You really want to make them feel comfortable and make them um, understand that they're not really being tested, that we're just trying to test the design. And you want to encourage them to speak out loud and let you know what they're thinking at all times. So that's kind of what this section's for. You really just want to make them feel comfortable and understand that they're there to help us. After that, we go into the actual usability testing part. And so here are two examples of an impression test and a usability scenario. So impression tests, I don't actually know if this is the correct terminology, it's just what I tend to call them. So this is when you show a user a screen and you just wanna get their first thoughts. So here's an example of something that I would ask. I would say, take a look at the screen and tell me what you see. Feel free to browse or click around, though not everything is working in this prototype. If I need some more information from them, I might ask some follow-ups, which would be, what do you think you can do here? What do you think about the information you have access to on this page? It's questions like that. An example of a usability scenario, on the other hand, um, I would put here what I'm testing, but I'm not going to actually tell the user that because you never want to lead them and let them know what exactly you're trying to get them to do. This is just for our reference only. What I would say to the user is, you know, the scenario. So you're looking for blah, blah, blah. Try to blah, blah, blah. The very last thing that you would do is you would just wrap up. You would thank them for participating, remind them about the incentive that you'll be reaching out if there was an incentive promised, and then you'll ask them if they have any final thoughts. So there are two main ways that you can do an interview. It can be done through moderated testing or unmoderated testing. So moderated testing is when you're meeting with a user or a participant live. So that could be in person, it can be through Zoom. Unmoderated testing on the other hand is done without your presence. So you could send them a link to something and they can do it on their own time or you can use one of the usability testing platforms like Maze. To stay organized, it's very important to track your progress. So whether that's done in a Notion page, 
a Google Doc or an Excel page, you wanna have some sort of document that tracks all of your participants and what phase they're in. So did you schedule an interview with them? Has the interview taken place? Has their data been analyzed? This helps you know what phase you're in and what still needs to be done. One of the more difficult phases is the analysis phase. So you have all of your data, you've done all of your research, and now you're left with all this information. How do you figure out what means what? How do you know what the actual trends are? What do the majority feel about this? What do they think? So there are a couple of different ways you can go about doing this. The one I'm gonna to explain today is affinity mapping. Essentially what you do when you are doing an aggregated affinity map is you take your main notes and quotes from the research, stick them onto sticky notes. Each sticky note represents a different point or quote. And then what you do is you start rearranging everything and putting similar items with similar items. And then after that, you label those groups to try and figure out what they have in common. And then you take those groupings and you turn them into sentence format so that you can have an actual trend that you can explain to the client or whoever it is that you're presenting to. Essentially what you would do is you would take your notes from your research session along with quotes and then you would put the important ones onto sticky notes. And on the side here, I have color coded them. So this is participant one, participant two, participant three, and participant four. And I've color coded them for a reason, but it's not important at the moment. And what you're going to do is in the next step, you're going to copy and paste this over here, and then you're gonna start reorganizing them. You're gonna put like items with like items. And then once you've put like items together, you're going to label those sections. So what did these these quotes and notes have in common and then you label it um, and then if these these sections are related in some way you could add um, a higher level section and this is a way for you to see the main trends once you've determined the different trends you can decide on which ones you want to highlight so i've done that here with these circles and then after that you just put them into sentence format And lastly, the presentation. You have to find a way to present all of the information in a formal and concise way. So the best way to do that is through a slide deck. You can use like Google Slides or you could use Figma. So here we have a slide for the project title. You're gonna put who it's prepared by and here you can put like a logo or um, a website, whatever you'd like then um, it's good to start off with positive information and positive feedback for the client. So anything that the participants said that were positive would be nice to outline here. Just highlight like two or three. It kind of gets them excited. Then you're going to go through the objectives of the research. You can say it was to test the usability of this, that, and the other. And then you can go into the research methods. So, you know, usually it's a moderated usability test via Zoom. Um, you could say how many tasks you did, how many impression tests there were, if there was a preference test or usability test or whatever. And then you would say how long each session was. And by the way, if you're looking for graphics, I got these from a plugin called StorySet by FreePick. Next, you will outline, you know, the characteristics of your participants you know, their gender, how they were recruited, what kind of experience they have, where they're from. And then this is the main juicy part of the presentation. So you're going to go into the feature that you tested, the type of test that you did, and you could share an example of something that you said to them. So, you know, in my impression test, I said, take a look at the screen and tell me what, you've, what you see. And then I'm going to highlight some of the main um, things that happened during those sessions. And then what you can do is include a quote. Quotes are actually very powerful, so I would suggest that you always include a quote. And then um, a visual if it's helpful, because the client might not know what you're referring to when you say, oh, I tested this feature, right? So you want to show them what it looked like, what the user actually saw. And then the screen after that, if necessary, is 
the design change that you're proposing based off of the findings from here. So you can put the feature name and then you could say the designs changed. So I could say like um, drop down, like if that's the thing that I was going to change or I could say um, side nav or whatever. And then you just describe what the change proposal is and the reason for it. It shouldn't be too long, it should be pretty brief because people have short attention spans and the more text you have on a screen, the less likely people are to pay attention. And then here you'd have um, an example of what the original design was, so what you tested, and what the design will be, so um, the proposal. And then here's just another example, one with um, usability test findings. So I put the success rate, so you know, 100%, 75%, and then again, you have your highlights, quotes, and then a picture. You always wanna have a next steps slide um, in your presentation so that um, everyone knows what's next, what's coming up next. So you could say like, oh, we're gonna implement the redesigns and then retest or, or whatever. And then you have your thank you screen. So some common questions that I found myself asking when I started doing research, and I'm sure you are curious about too, is where do I find my participants? So one of the things that gave me anxiety about being a UX designer was I thought that when I did research, I would always have to go out hunting for users. And that gave me a lot of stress. And it was one of the cons to becoming a UX designer. But in reality, most of the time, you don't have to actually hunt for your own users. If you're doing like a client project, usually the client has their own users that they can reach out to. Sometimes companies will pay to get paid users. And then there's the occasional time where they'll ask everyone like, hey, if you know anybody, um, ask them to do this study or whatever. But that's not really that common. There was only one time that my company needed users and we couldn't find any. So we had to go to the internet and provide like Amazon gift cards for that. But it was not a good experience. There was a lot of spamming, a lot of fake interviewers, people trying to pretend to be other people so that they could get more incentives. And so um, I would advise not to look for your own users on the internet. If you do ever have to find your own users, it's better to do it within your own network. You know the drill, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.